on the inside. And uh, am, am I wrong there? Okay. Uh, so it, it was getting in disrepair, so they closed it. And then when they did do it on it, they found out that one of the employees had embezzled more than two hundred thousand dollars in that five year period. So the FBI came in and the FBI kept it closed. And after a building is closed for a year, it has to be brought up to code. So in order to bring it up to code, there's some extensive renovation that has to be done. Now that's going to be done, and it's going to be done on our tax. We're putting up, as taxpayers, the one and a half million dollars to renovate the inside of this building. So that not only is this our building, but that should give us that much more say so about what is done in the building. Well, Destination Cleveland County came to them, uh, came to the commissioner, and they wanted to do the Earl Scruggs Center there. Let me back up and tell you how the Earl Scruggs Center began to begin with. Jim Allen had an idea. If you look on the, the uh, records, you'll see that Jim Allen is still listed as the chief agent for that corporation, which was the historical museum. He wanted to give the museum a shot to arm. So he had an idea of why did we not just um, do a room or a section of the museum and honor our uh, musical heritage. So he and a group approached the Don Gibson family and the Earl Scruggs family about the possibility of doing this. It was supposed to encompass some other singers too. Somewhere down the line, it got to the point that Don Gibson and uh, was going to have to go to another building because the Scrubs family wanted the Scrubs to be there and, and Don Gibson to be somewhere else. So this is where Destination Cleveland County began because Jim Allen pulled out that <coughs> we can't do this just for one. So then Destination Cleveland County picked up the ball and it was, at that time, if you look back at the newspaper, it was called the Southern Heritage Museum. And they were taking a look at moving our artifacts to a different building and having it solely for this. Somewhere down the line, it got to be the Earl Scruggs Center. And how they got into it being the Earl Scruggs Center was one of their consultants told them that the name museum does not bring people in, that you need a hook. So the Earl Scruggs name would be the hook that would get people over here to come to the museum. Well, they approached the county commissioners and they, they uh, proposed doing this Earl Scruggs Museum for the courthouse. And the commissioners at that point should have opened it up where everybody else in the county would have had an opportunity to present whatever they wanted to do for the museum or to say that they just won't anything else other than the historical museum could be there. But the commissioners didn't step forward and let the public know that this building might be available. And it's immediately when Destination Cleveland County went to them and proposed this Earl Scruggs Center, that Destination Cleveland County began advertising and marketing that it was going to be held in the courthouse. They have not been given permission to do this even to this day. I talked to Mary Acker about this last summer. She said she had a problem with uh, some of the wording. And I said, you know, you need to have them take this off until it is actually given to them. Now, if, if I say that we have an accountability problem with our commissioners and our, our hired, our uh, elected officials, we have a credibility problem with Destination Collection County. If these people are going to be the leaders, and again, I remind you that they are self-appointed leaders. They are not empowered by the people. We didn't elect them, and we didn't hire them. And the real danger with this type of leadership is that you can't fire them, and you can't vote them out of office. So they have gone to the commissioners, and they have asked for this building, and immediately they marketed it like it's theirs. And that squelched anybody else going and, and looking to do something there. And so I, I call that false advertising. I look at that as lack of credibility. The second thing they did is when this fell apart at the courthouse, when the Earl Scruggs camp decided that Don Gibson camp could not be in there in the same building, the county commissioner should have stepped in right then. They should have stepped in and said, wait a minute. 
you know, this is either going to to be like this or it's not going to be done. They did. And and uh, destination Cleveland County let that's when the, the power shifted from them to the Earl Scruggs County. And so I look at that as a credibility problem. Then the second thing is they had to go sign the building for Earl Scruggs, I mean Don Gibson. And when they went to sign the building, they went to Rogers Theater. And I was saying to Andrew Hopper that when they went to the Rogers Theater, um, Uptown Shelby Association owned the building at this time, not by Rogers. He had sold it to Uptown Shelby Association. And Uptown Shelby Association wanted to buy it. And he had even gone, Bobby Rogers had even gone to uh, John Edwards and got him to get a grant so that the Uptown Shelby Association could afford to buy it. He reduced the price, and at the same city, he wrote a check for $35,000 to Uptown Shelby Association to help the rent pay it. And so when Destination Cleveland County went to the Rogers Theater to look at that as a venue for the Don Gibson Theater, they, there is a clause in there. They were all aware of it, they read this, that this Rogers Theater would always retain the name Rogers Theater. When they put up that sign last December, it said Don Gibson Theater, and it did not say Rogers Theater anywhere, and Bobby Rogers questioned it, then that is when they picked up their toll and went home. And so, but this is not what they will say. They will tell you that it wasn't big enough or all these other things. I look at that as a credibility problem. And they, they say that they do have a PR problem. Well, well that is um, the point where we are now. So then they went to the uh, state theater, the old flick, and got the city of Shelby to allow them to use the Flint Theater. Now, the city had bought uh, this Flint Theater so they would have a place for the police department to expand. And now I don't know what the police department will do when the expansion comes. But the, uh, Rick Howell, the city manager, negotiated for the city with destination Cleveland County for the use of that building. And this was what they negotiated. A dollar a year for the next four years and then they could buy it for tax value. Tax value is $207,137. And, and they gave them an agreement that if they can raise $500,000 that the city would match it with another $500,000. They would give it to them. So in essence, when they give them that 500, when they say, I've got my 500,000, then the city's going to hand them 500,000, and then they're going to hand them 200 back and say, here's the bill that thank you for the 300,000. Now, let's clarify something in, in um, their favor, because you can look at this as I did to begin with and thought, now wait a minute, how can they let our firemen go uh, lose their job? And, and then they've got 500,000 to give to uh, Destination Cleveland County. This comes out of motel hotel tax. And motel hotel tax has to be used for tourism. And we take in about $100,000 a year. This next year we'll probably take it more because of the American Legion. But this is five years worth of motel hotel tax. One thing they could have done is they could have paid off the carousel mortgage and they would save the interest on that loan and they could use that interest money to keep the fire working. So, you know, that's a, a side that they could have done. But anyway, this is where they are on that uh, Don Gibson Theater. Now, back to the courthouse. When when they um, approached them about having this as the um, Earl Scruggs Center, and, and the commissioner said nothing, they, they uh, have, have let Destination Cleveland County come periodically and give them updates. And about a year ago, I started looking into this. And in, in uh, spring, I started talking to Brown about, the, the, I say, this is the scuttlebutt. You refute it. Let me tell you what's been said. You know, you all need to get it out to the public. I started with the commissioners, too. In October, I uh, approached the commissioners at a meeting, and I told them that they needed to answer some questions. I gave them a list of eight questions. I gave each one of them a copy. That if they would answer these questions in a public forum, that we um, would come to better terms, the citizens of Cleveland County and destination Cleveland County.
to my knowledge to this day, they haven't answered them. But it was things like, is there an agreement with Destination Cleveland County and, and uh, Cleveland County? And if this opens up, who gets the money? Where does the money come from to rent it? This type of thing. And so still, there's no answer to that. And so now, um, they approached them in November, November 20th is commissioner's meeting, and they asked for the use of the courthouse for the Earl Scrubs Center. And they came in with no documents, and I think the commissioners were ready to, to give them a carte blanche because Eddie Holbrook said, I heard enough, and I'm ready to say to accept the proposal. And uh, Mary Acker goes, who's backing me? And, and uh, Johnny Hutchins goes, wait a minute, wait a minute, what are we voting on? He said to Brownie, if you were prepared, you would have a document in here with you to sign. I'm not voting on anything until I see what we're voting on. And he said, I'm for Heritage 150%, but I want to see some paperwork. What you're going to do is fill this and so forth. So they left it that uh, David Deere and the, the county manager and Bob Yelton, the county attorney, would uh, negotiate a, a consensual uh, lease agreement for them to look at for the use of the building. They had to be back by January 15th with this, and they still have not come back with it. I don't know what's holding it up. I don't know if it's the law you're in or what, but something is, uh, is holding up uh, getting those papers signed. Now this is where I have a problem with the uh, with the accountability of our government officials because the first place I just told you they didn't come forward and let everybody know that this building was available to do anything with and in the second place when I started looking at their corporate papers I saw that on their board of directors our city manager Rick Howell is an ex officio voting uh, member and also our county manager is an ex officio voting member. Uh, th there's some chairs back there in the room. Would one of you men help? There's some up here too. Yeah, okay, there's more here. Come more here. But our city manager and our county manager are sitting on their board negotiating our money, our taxpayers' money, and our building. And I spoke to the county commissioners meeting two weeks ago, and I told them then, I said, you can't sit on both sides of the seat. Now, um, uh, Destination Cleveland County came out with beautiful brochure recently, and they sent it to the people that they wanted to uh, get the money uh, from uh, to, to get the endorsement. This is the brochure that they sent out. And, and there's a, a DVD in here. And if anybody would like to take a, a look at this, or if you'd like a copy, if you let me know, I'll make you one. But uh, when I started looking at, at their brochure, I said, well, I'll be darned. There is three of our county commissioners that sat on their task force last year that planned their uh, uh, strategic um, planning a task force for, three, uh, for the next five years. They sat on the board that planned it. Now, folks, if they sit on the board and plan it, they're not going to vote against it. So I'm thinking, silly me, when I told Brownie Plaster last summer that I thought she would have a hard sell getting our courthouse, and she said, we'll see. I thought she had to, to sell the seat on the idea. I wasn't thinking about all she had to do was get three commissioners. And here was the three commissioners that is, is in here that, that sat on their board. Who are they? Who are they? Uh, Eddie Holbrook and uh, Joe Bob and Mary Acker. And on this eight minute DVD, Mary Acker and Joe Bob endorsed it. And Eddie Holbrook also, as is, is on the testimony, endorses it for the community <coughs> college. I'll be happy to bring her to see this and I can say, I'll make you a law. Well, no it's not, because I have been to the Institute of Government Chapel Hill. <laughs> What, and according to Dr. Stephen Bell, Dr. Stephen and Dr. Flynn Bell, it's not. And they would have to get 10% off the pay before it would be against the law. But it is a conflict of interest. And it is a violation of the And I talked to David Deere about this last fall. And I said, David, I have a problem when you sit on this floor. 
And, I, and he said, I'm not voting. And I said, well, you may have a problem with destination Cleveland County. I'm going to go to the chief operating officer here in Cleveland County. And that would be you. And if you're sitting on that forward, I'm going to know.